www.youtube.com slash tapcac. Chris is Hungry, a show involving cooking and other things. Episode 14, Second Half, Souffle Omelette. This means it's a two-part episode, so please, at the end of this video, please start from episode 14, first half. All material, including music, monologues, and artwork by Christopher D. Hampton. Tapcac at gmail.com Folks, uh, so welcome to the second half of the Souffle Omelette episode. And anybody who goes to a cooking school will be uh, learning you know, omelettes and frittatas. And not that I've been to a cooking school or anything, but I do have friends who have. And I figured I would make something normal. So I'm making not just an omelette, but a souffle omelette. So for about f first thing I did was I took six eggs and I... Uh, I separated the uh, yolks and the whites, and I beat them for about 15 minutes. That's why you help call this big bowl of foam here. And now it's time to take the yolks and take out the uh, blade here. And then we pour the yolks in here. Then, and then we take this rubber spatula here and we're going to mix it together like that. And so we have reassembled eggs, so to speak. And I have this, even though it is a non-stick pan, I buttered it up anyway. So we're going to stick that on medium. And continue mixing this part. And then, we're going to put that in the middle. And pour it. In here. Okay, so while that's heating up, you know what I like? I like movies. You know what I like more than watching movies? I like watching people watch movies. I like watching audiences. I like going to and seeing a movie and then later seeing it again and watching the audience. Exhibit A. Um, well, let's see, uh, many years ago there was uh, Passion of the Christ, which came out, and of course it, you know, I, heard, I went to go see it because I heard it was, you know, so controversial about, for some reason or other, and yeah, there was, yeah, when it came to all the torture and all the, you know, slicing and the dicing and the, you know, scourging and the bleh, um, yeah, uh, it, it, it was way over the edge, and, you know, for me, well, well actually for any first time watcher, as a matter of fact, uh, Unfortunately, somebody with a heart condition uh, saw it and uh, died of a heart attack while watching it because it was just so overwhelming. So, and a few days later, I watched it with uh, another, uh, well, well, I actually watched it with an audience. I had, hadn't seen it, but I had. And, uh, yeah, most of the time, it was, you know, there were some people kind of like, can I watch now? Can I look now? Can I look now? Can I look now? And other, some people... You know, getting up out of their seats to go to take a rest for a little bit because it's just like, oh my god, what have I gotten myself into? And at the end of it, South Park was not exaggerating. This was pretty much everybody who, uh, at the end of the movie, getting up out of their seat. And let's see, also there was that movie The Ring. I happened to catch it on a Saturday morning. It was the first showing of the day. And uh, yeah, well, you know, there, there was the curse tape. And uh, at the end of part of, uh, 
uh, there, there's one showing of the curse tape which looks like a Nine Inch Nails video and uh, the um, there's, it, it, there, it kind of cuts off right when you see these arms coming out of the well you know and later you see the arm you know, the, the curse tape is playing and the uh, arms come out of the well and the girl Samara you know pulls herself out of the well and she starts coming closer and closer and closer and closer and you're thinking, no, no, wait a minute, no, she's not really, no. oh, oh, oh my god, oh, yeah, and the uh, following week I saw it with a packed crowd, because when I first saw it, I was one of three people in the theater, you know, it was in the morning, this time I saw it on a Friday night, and uh, watching the audience, I knew it was coming, they did not, and they're you know, watching it, and you go, oh, no, 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 oh, 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 oh. <laughs> And I'm just like, <laughs> kind of like, um, and speaking of the curse tape from uh, The Ring, let me set this for about a few minutes. Um, speaking of the curse tape from The Ring, now in the movie it said that, you know, if you watch it and you make a copy and you show it to somebody else, then the curse is removed from you and you won't die in seven days. Um, the Star Wars Holiday Special. It's just like the curse tape. The first time you watch it, it's a nightmare. And it's horrifying. It's just like, how did anybody think that this would be cool? How, you know. And, uh, yeah, so it's horrifying, but then you watch it a second time with somebody else who hasn't watched it. And so you can now laugh at some scenes while they, on the meantime, they're being horrified. And now they're supposed to you know, so it's to somebody else so that way they so that way they can remove the curse from them. And let's see how this is doing. Got the let's move that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like that. And then draw a nice little circle. Okay. Maybe I should put a cover on it. So, another thing I like, director's cuts. Now, in seeing, it's like that. There, there's what's put out in the theater, and then there's what the director wanted to put out, but uh, they couldn't because of some reason or other. Maybe it was running too long, or uh, maybe the they, people didn't like the ending. Uh, as far as yeah, like, uh, the butterfly effect. In the theater version of the movie, uh, it ends where uh, the guy who keeps going back in time over and over and over again because every time he goes back in time, this person is saved, that person is saved, but this person is not. So he goes back in time, now that person who is not, they are, and this person is, but this person is not. And it's, it goes back and forth, you know, it's either this person's gone, but everybody else is okay, this person's gone, but th these people are okay. And. Finally, he goes back in time, in the theater version, he goes back in time to when he first met all these uh, friends of his and, um, you know, just tells them off and doesn't have anything to do with them. Now, in the director's cut, he goes back in time and he, uh, all the way to his being born, and he strangles himself with his umbilical cord. So, he's never born, and, and everybody lives happily ever after. So it's actually a better world without him in it. So it's pretty much the ending and the uh, opposite of It's a Wonderful Life because it's a wonderful life because he was never in it. And uh, yeah, so the director probably said, no, 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 let, let's not have uh, suicide being the answer. <laughs> so let's see how this has turned out. It's Still needs to cook a bit more. Maybe another minute. Uh, what else? So, um, <laughs> it's taking a bit longer than I thought it would be. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, more director's cut. Um, Nightbreed. One of my favorite movies is Nightbreed, uh, brought to you by Clive Barker, who also brought you Hellraiser and uh, 
uh, well, he wrote the original stories for Candyman and The Midnight Meat Train and The Book of Blood and Dread and so many other things. And... Okay, that's almost ready. So, he, um... Met, well, there was that movie called Nightbreed, and there was a theater version that came out in 1990, I believe. And recently there was a director's cut which, with a whole bunch of alternate scenes. It's about 20 minutes longer. Not only does it have extra scenes, not only does it have extra scenes, it has alternate scenes, and, uh, uh, and there's even a different ending, and uh, one part, uh, that, that there's one character who, if you saw the theater version, you loved him. You adored him. He was hilarious, and in the spoiler alert, the uh, in the director's cut, he gets killed by you know by David Cronenberg as Doctor Decker, and, uh, and so and, and when when you see that that's happened, you're thinking to yourself, no, no, no way, you you jerk, for what you really want to say, uh, and the other side of my brain is saying. It, Oh, now he's a jerk? What about the, uh, all the things he's been doing the rest of the movie? It's like, yeah, but this makes him a super jerk. So, here we go. And let's throw some spices on this. Got some pepper. Got some oregano. Then we're going to put that right there. And gonna take this thing here and maybe I do it left handed. Nope. Okay, well. Okay, there we go. And you get to go like that, nice and fluffy, and there. And here we have our nice flummy omelet. And it'll it takes and you have to let it stand for a little bit, so let it finish cooking itself. In the meantime, how about some music?
Have a nice day, folks. Oh. Yeah, let's take another look at that. Nicey nice. Very, very fluffy. <laughs>